best strategies for paying off multiple credit cards. So if you have credit cards, I'm going to redefine them as investing cards. Now, I'm not giving you a financial advice. I've just been doing this for a long time. I work with a lot of student athletes, so we're going to talk about the different ages. Some of you are older and you've just kind of given up because you say, well, I don't have good credit, so I can't do this. No, 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 no. We're going to fix it all. So get a pen and paper. It begins today. So specifically, I'm going to talk about four things. I'm going to talk about how people just constantly do one wrong thing. We're going to get all that on paper and you got to stop doing this one wrong thing. Number two, I'm going to talk about why people use credit cards. And I'm going to give you a lot of extra bonuses, like just ideas. Why use credit card? I have one student who actually uses them to pay almost everything, almost everything. And there's a reason for that. Number three, we just have to change your language around credit cards and debt. This is the most valuable investing tool you could use. And number four, I'm going to share with you not only one student, but multiple students have used this strategy to use $100,000 or more of investment credit cards to launch a seven figure business. So get a pen and paper. We have a lot to do today. So for those of you that are students or younger, right? And even if you're not like a student going to school, you're 18, 22 to 24, I'm talking to that range. You can all qualify. You do have to put in income into your application. So again, I'm going to give you a link that gives you a very specific video that is absolutely critical for you to get started. Now, those of you that are 18, 19, 20, I want to speak to you. You're another subgroup. You already balloon it. Like, right, you went to college campuses and everybody offered you a credit card. Like you said, get a free t-shirt, no, go open a credit card. It's all the time at retail stores are always asking you to open credit cards. Be very careful. You need like six to seven credit cards. A lot of those store credit cards, they're going to pull hard on your credit, which means it's going to hit your credit. So why get those store credit cards when you just disperse, unless you really are going to shop at those retail stores on a regular basis? Use your American Express, use your Discover. It all adds up to awards that you can use across all those categories. So unless it's really, really focused, I would highly guard against some of those because every retail outlet has their own credit card they're going to offer you. And if you're not really a regular shopper, it's kind of not a good, great use of your credit, in my opinion. So you got to learn about money, folks. Again, that's why I want you on my channel five days a week, 10 to 15 minutes a day. Really understand this, not hear Laurel and say, oh, that's a great idea. I don't want you just to talk it. I want you to walk it. So I need you to be here, be serious about it. Go to asklaurel.com. It's where we are all the time. In fact, we've just reassigned a team of six people every day to answer every question. So we'll answer your questions through asklaurel.com for free. If you want to be part of our membership where you get to text and talk to me, then you're going to click on the link and you'll follow that all the way through. If you want to talk to somebody about cleaning up your credit or getting corporate credit, or all of those things, just put it in the askworld.com. You can ask a question or make a request on that web page. Now, there's also a video that I'm going to share as a big gift for you coming and asking a question. Ask any question and, just, and you can just come and say, I want the video that Laurel's talking about from Georgia Southern. So we're doing a lot of work with those men of Georgia Southern football team. My son plays there and we have an amazing video with one of our top credit experts that starts at the beginning. How do you pick a first credit card? How do you fill out an application so you don't blow it? See, some of you have already blown it from the beginning because you didn't fill out the application right. From the beginning, you have to put in income. And some of you say, well, I don't have any income. You all have income. You just aren't thinking about it like income. So you got to watch that video. Go ask me a question and I'll give you that video. Now we've kind of completed that whole circle. You have new language, new structure, new way to pay. You got to pay them all, pay them every 30 days. So the first thing and wrong thing, which, you know, is really what Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey teach. And I'd have to agree with it is that most people are using credit cards to just go into debt because they don't have enough money. So the real answer to not having credit card debt is make more money. It isn't live below your means. It isn't minimize what you're doing, reduce your spending. I mean, you can live that, but I am clearly not your coach and mentor. If you want to roll and actually make money and use credit cards properly. Well, first of all, credit cards are a 30 day like guarantee of using somebody else's money. It is so valuable. But if you're using it because you're not making enough money, which is what 90% of people do, they go to their job or they have a business, there's not making enough money. So they put the rest of their life on a credit card. Well, I don't know how you think you're ever going to catch up because the core base foundation of what's wrong is you don't have enough cash in the first place. Credit cards is just supplemental and you don't get out of that. And then the worst cycle, and I've seen so many adults, I know people that live like that. And it's just, it's heartbreaking where all they do every five to seven years is they go through 
through a bankruptcy or they consolidate their credit cards, which is a really expensive option. Not a fan of putting it all together and worse, putting it into your home mortgage. Now you just devalued your house with a whole bunch of like lifestyle payments. So first of all, use your credit cards when you know you can pay them off every 30 days, right? And why use them? Points, awards. I mean, I know people who travel all over the world. We have millions and millions of points. Why? Because we constantly, I've taught and I teach even student athletes at 18 years old, use a credit card, not a debit card. So let me just talk about that for a moment. Then I'm going to talk about good debt and bad debt. So the difference between a debit card and credit card is the debit card comes right out of your bank account, right? Straight out of your bank account. And if there's any fraud or mischarges or anything, it's over. The bank's not going to defend you. That's not their job. That's a credit card company's job. So say you use your Discover or Visa or American Express and you make the payments. First of all, you don't have to actually pay it off money out of your account for 30 days. That's the highest value. Plus you get all the points, you get the rewards. If something happens and there's a mischarge or something, you get a new credit card probably within 24 to 48 hours. The credit card company fights the charges and you're off doing your thing again, making money. So again, the base foundation of my support for credit cards is that you want to make enough money. You want to use the financial systems. The number one mistake is the misuse of not even having enough money to ever pay it off. And so when you don't pay it up, it's when you start incurring interest. So as long as you have the money to pay them off, start using your cards as much as you can accrue points, awards, and everything else that you get for it. Literally the travel value of that is gonna change your life if you ever wanna travel. And if you don't travel a lot, then use other cards that actually have groceries, local meals, local restaurants where you're gonna get the points that way. So look at what you do and how you spend and choose the cards appropriately. Good debt and bad debt. Bad debt is what I explained in the beginning. Bad debt is because it accrues over time and you're not making enough money and you're gonna to have to do something. It's gonna to tobble up to probably 20, 21%. And when interest rates environment is, is rising the way that it is, I mean, home mortgages are heading towards four and 5%, which means interest and credit cards can go as high as 28%. You don't want to live in that model. I mean, try to find an investment that cash flow is 28% per month. These banks are making a fortune on your lack of financial literacy and misunderstanding of credit cards. Good debt is using them for 30 days. How do you pay them off properly? How do you pay off multiple cards? Well, first of all, I think you should have five, six, seven cards. And if you have yourself, and multiple companies, LLCs, S Corp, C Corps, they all can have their own credit cards. So now you have so much availability of credit, right? And so how do you use that? You pay them off every 30 days. You do not pay them off. This is critical, big, big asterisk here. This is critical. You don't pay them off at one time. You want money in the financial system with the banks, the credit card companies, the financial system, let's call that as a big general umbrella. They're looking at your ability to make and spend money. They're looking at that appropriateness of your spending. So if you have four cards, for example, week one, you pay off card one. Week two, pay off card two, right? And start using them again. Week three, pay off card three. Week four, pay off card four. And then start using them again. So you always have some debt. This is where those folks who say, oh, live debt free. I can promise you if they're wealthy, they don't do what they say. You don't live debt free. You want the financial systems to see your ability to make and spend very appropriate money. And the more you do, guess what? The bigger your lines of credit. And you may start with maybe only a thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar availability on a card, but you start doing some of the techniques that I'm talking about. 60, 90 days from now, you call back your credit card company, they're going to give you an extended limit. In fact, if you call them back and say, you know, I have a business investment that I need to do and I need to take my five thousand dollar limit to twenty thousand, the first line of phone call people will probably say no, ask to talk to a manager, supervisor and say, I'm really going for my business. I need lines of credit to grow my company. I need inventories. I need equipment. I need things to actually get my business started. I have a business plan. I'm going to make over six figures. They're going to extend your lines of credit. You are going to be shocked when you start doing this right. Now, for those of you who blew your credit, we have some amazing credit repair experts. I don't care how old you are, you just have to fix it. So if you are an individual and a social security number and you've already blown your personal credit, it's gonna take you a minute. Now, really good, good, good folks and you have to be actively involved, you could probably fix it in six months to a year. Some of you, if you've done some really big stuff to yourself, like formal all the way through bankruptcies, foreclosures, you know, you just totally skip mortgage or car payments, you've been repoed or any of those things, that's gonna take more like three to five years. You say, well, it's not worth it. It is worth it. In the meantime, you're gonna have corporate credit cards. That's a whole different sophisticated structure, but you can do it. I have people who literally have gone through all those things, met us out here on our YouTube channel, which by the way, you need to subscribe right now, click the notification button, share this with all your friends, 
Remember, you're the sum of the five people around you, so get them smart too, so you're all having a proper conversation, an accurate conversation about money. So you gotta start, but you could start a company and it has its own corporate credit, and some company structures have no association to your social security number. There's your million dollar, trillion dollar tip. So pay off your credit cards every 30 days. Don't get in that lifestyle cycle of getting so far ahead of yourself using credit cards with not knowing where the money's coming from. Pay them off regularly. Use every point and award system that you can. Really focus on the good debt portion of this. And in fact, let's change the language. Again, we call these investment cards because used right, and let me tell you about some students, used right, their credit and their corporate credit together qualified for over $150,000. They were doing fix and flips. I have multiple students who do this all over the country. And as they were using their credit cards to pay vendors, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever they were going for their supplies and materials, right? Doing the whole rehab, paying those cards off. Once they flip the property, make sure it's all paid back. You stay at 0%. So now you have free money. So those of you who are learning from other real estate experts to use OPM, I can guarantee you the first line of defense, the first line of opportunity is what I'm talking about. Investment credit cards, because you have great lines of credit. It's 0%. Worst case, you've got to use the bank's money. It's four and 5%. I'm a hard money lender. Right now, 12 is the minimum I would take for my money. I want 15. Interest rates are going up. You got to pay more for the money. So again, for you students, we're talking general cards. I'm a huge fan of American Express Discover. Go to your local bank and get a Visa card or a MasterCard, whatever they support at your local bank where you actually do your banking. They'll start you out probably really small lines, maybe 500,000, 2,500. That's a great way to get started. Do exactly like I talked about on the pay down processes and you're gonna be fine. Now, if you're really bad, like you really blew it, like you're sub 500, which I have some students that are there, you might have to just get what's called a secured credit card. So you're gonna go into, again, a, like one of the bigger names, and you're gonna pay them $1,000, they're gonna give you a card, and you just can use the $1,000. But it is a way that you're going to have a secured and paid for. So basically, you're paying advance for the use of a card. And if you haven't noticed lately, there's a lot of places not taking cash and you're gonna to have to have a card to start transacting. And as we move towards digital and crypto and international currency, it's gonna look like a credit card. So get used to it. You're gonna to have to use it. And that old school thinking of don't have credit cards and don't have debt is wrong. So I'm right, they're wrong, stay tuned. And uh, we'll talk tomorrow.